For Frank Herbert, the material that eventually led to developing his own ecological ideas began in 1953. During this time he was working as a yellow journalist and was sent to research an environmental story in Florence, Oregon. The article was about an attempt by the US Forest Service to use the planting of barrier grasses, rather than a human engineered solution, to prevent moving sands from encroaching upon highways and roads. At one point the sands even threatened to encroach upon the town of Florence itself. Although the article was never published, it began Herbert's fascination with sand dunes and the desert. This fascination would take his research down many different paths, at the end of which he realised he had collected a vast amount of information relating to the ecology of deserts. As such, he felt this was a suitable topic that he could extrapolate, and from which he could produce a work of science fiction. I finally saw I had something enormously interesting going for me about the ecology of deserts, and it was, for a science fiction writer anyway, an easy step from that to think, what if I had an entire planet that was desert? During my studies of deserts, of course, and previous studies of religions, I had seen that many religions began in a desert atmosphere. I decided to put the two together because I don't think that any one story should have any one thread. Frank's enthusiasm for the subject shows readily in his letters to his agent Lurton Blasingham, and in particular his fascination with the concept of ecologists regarding the nature of sand dunes as being synonymous to waves at sea. To Herbert's enthrallment, the difficulties in overcoming an age-old problem of sand encroachment had finally been mastered by viewing sand dunes in this way for the first time, that is, much akin to the theories of fluid mechanics. In studying the desert, Frank also came to research those peoples that live in such regions of the world, who have adapted systems of successful living often as vital integral parts of their own ecosystems. These peoples, from desert cultures all around the world, also embedded a sense of romantic mystique with Frank. The differences in the interaction of these cultures and their environments, compared against the way people from western cultures conversely seem to tame and conquer their environment, was all too apparent to him. It's my belief for a long time that man inflicts himself on his environment. In western culture we tend to think that we can overcome nature by mechanical means. We accumulate enough data and we subdue it. This is a one-pointed vision of man, because if you really started looking at man, western man, you'll see that you could cut him right down the middle and he's blind on that backside. It was for this reason that Herbert claimed it was very important that the one man who represents the viewpoint of a western man, namely Liet Kint, the imperial planetologist, is actually killed by the planet that he seeks to tame and transform. Kynes is indeed the scientist who has a thorough if incomplete understanding of the interactions of the planet's ecosystem, and it is his approach to transforming the ecology of Arrakis that is both mechanical and short-sighted. Even though his viewpoint is that of a long-term ecological transformation, his outlook is not nearly long-term enough, and although Kynes has virtually become a Fremen, like Paul Atreides, perhaps his ultimate feeling is that he is in actuality not a Fremen, but a man of the Imperium who attempts to serve two masters. Whereas the Fremen are perfectly attuned to the environment, despite his great knowledge, he is not, and as Herbert puts it, is unaware that he is still a part of this system and out of rhythm with it. From these beginnings did the various facets of the ecology of the desert begin in Herbert's mind, but it was not until some ten years later that Dune would be ready for publication in its serial form in Analog magazine, and some two years later before it was published as a novel. The length of research that Herbert put into his work was voluminous, and there are examples of this interest in ecology appearing in his first book, The Dragon in the Sea. This novel received much acclaim when published in 1956, and was his only work other than short stories between then and the publication of Dune. As such it shares many themes and motifs with Dune, especially those of psychology, religion and ecology. 
Of particular note in The Dragon in the Sea is man's relationship with his environment, which in this case is the artificial and hermetic ecosystem of a small submarine, and especially the psychological pressures placed upon those who live and interact within it. The added pressure, the book is also known as under pressure, of living within a hermetically sealed environment while surrounded by another environment which can prove immediately fatal to the men of the submarine, has many echoes to the harsh nature of Arrakis and to those who live there. The precious nature of oil and the extreme dangers to which the crew of the Fenian Ram have to go through in order to procure it, shows Herbert's interest in hydraulic despotism, an ecological sub-theme he carries on in June with the mining of the spice melange.